Hey guys, Alex from 7th Hour Films back again with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Last time on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure we had the very long title, A Little Story from the Past. My name is Dopio. Where basically we met a young man named Dopio. He's the boss. He's not actually though. Uh, another facet of his mind is the boss. He also has a weird backstory. I don't think I could describe it to you. Yeah. Anyway... Dopio was on his way to uh, uh, find the gang at uh, the place that uh, the boss took the picture of uh, Trisha's mom. But then Dopio ran into Risotto, whose stand ability is to manifest metal anywhere. Interesting. Um... And then the boss was going to take over. And also, Dopio has a bit of King Crimson's power. I don't know. I don't know how any of it works. So, yeah. So, like always, the reaction is down in, in the description and in the pinned comment for your viewing pleasure. So, why don't we just go ahead and jump right into this episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Here we go. Come Oh boy, that that was it. That's it. That's exactly that's exactly it. They figured it out. They figured it out. And by throwing... By throwing those scalpels... By throwing those blades... Bucciarati caught them. That alerted them to what was going on on the cliff. But the only one truly breathing... The only one truly breathing was... Uh, was Risotto. Now... There's still a problem for him uh, that Dopio is not properly breathing and there's not a lot of iron in his blood. So I'm curious, is he going to think, like, are they going to get up there? Are they going to get up there, see that Risotto is dead? And are they, is he banking on Jorno healing him? Like maybe because they don't know who Dopio is? I don't think they would trust that, though. I think they would be questioning, wait, why, who is this person Risotto is fighting, you know? Must be someone who works for the boss. Okay. So, interesting stuff. Very, very interesting stuff. So, eulogy. Eulogy, that is, uh, the substand i guess of king crimson now here's the interesting thing about that plus uh it's the fact so dopio it seems that dopio technically doesn't have his own stand but he can have access to parts of king crimson he gets he is allowed eulogy which has its own time power and also the arms of King Crimson. Which is interesting. That's an interesting thing. So, it is foresight. That is the power of eulogy granted by Emperor Crimson is foresight. You can glimpse ten seconds into the future in a similar manner to the fact that he can skip... Uh, he can skip 10 seconds into the future, you know? So. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. And. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Um, so that's an interesting sort of power. And it is technically another time power. But this one is different. It's not really manipulating time. It's just seeing into the future. And it's interesting the fact that there are no changes. You cannot change the future whatsoever. Now, it's an interesting thing because we also have a power similar to this. Well, we had it 
in uh, in My Hero Academia, and that was part of the big thing with that quirk was, you know, how you know can you change the future or can you not? And eventually they show you can, uh, which is interesting. Um, and I will say, because part of it too, this has given me some Merlin flashbacks actually, which been, it's been a while since I've watched Merlin, but. If I remember correctly, when Merlin would get visions of the future, he would always take them at face value. And honestly, you can't, you really can't do that. And they show that here. They definitely show that here, that you can't take those visions on face value. Because Dopio started to take it on face value and took it that, okay, he's going to lose his foot. Because he sees, he can't see the end of his leg but he sees a foot being you know just flown about and he assumes that it's his foot and the boss assumes that it's his foot but it's actually it was actually risotto's foot specifically and later uh at the end the whole thing of you know, uh dopio missing part of his head was actually just uh risotto's blood camouflaging and making it look like that and the boss even said oh i guess i guess you know dopio's prediction did come true so they do come true but you have to you have to figure out how it can still benefit you you know even if it is inevitable what will happen you have to figure out how you can you know make it out on the other side you know and that was always a problem I had in Merlin, is that in five seasons, Merlin never learned how to do that, you know? Merlin always took uh, visions of the future at face value and didn't really do anything else with it. So, luckily, it seems that uh, that Dopio may learn that a bit, you know? But yeah. So, uh, so Metallic. Presumably, uh, the true name is Metallica, which is brilliant is it's absolutely brilliant and i love his look i also feel like screams metallica like it it works on that level it's not it's not just some person just the way okay why were his eyes black why why were his eyes black they never explained that but just with his outfit and everything i can kind of get maybe he was wearing contacts i don't know but yeah but either way it's interesting so his power is that he can manipulate the iron in blood that is really interesting and i'm hearing my dog move about so i'm gonna go check on him real quick Alrighty, i'm back so he can manipulate the iron in blood that is really interesting and yeah it reminds me of freaking magneto and x2 he's like there's too much iron in your blood you know so that's really interesting, and he can use that to manifest uh, different metals, basically. Uh, very Various razor-sharp things. And then, cause, and it's not just, that's the thing, it's not just the iron in blood, it's just iron, basically. Which, it's basically a more, sort of, I guess, advanced version of Magneto, you know? Like, if there was, you know, if he was, like, at an industrial complex, he'd just be doing Magneto stuff throwing like a bunch of giant pipes and stuff but he specifically concentrates on smaller forms of iron he's that precise about it uh and that's really cool i like that you know he can get iron from the ground from you know from a person from the plants and everything which is interesting and in order to make himself uh invisible he gathers uh basically metallic dust around him which you know uh inverts all the light and everything in a similar manner in a similar manner to how uh wamu had his uh air shield basically to keep him out of the sunlight you know so that's good also reusing that concept i'm trying to think if we've ever had a stand that can control metal i don't think so i'm thinking i, th I think i'm thinking of uh uh, like the villain from the first MHA movie. Um, he could control metal and stuff. But I love the precision that Risotto has about it, you know? So that's really cool. And then, yeah, we had everything of, you know, 
without that iron, Dopio was, you know, having trouble breathing, you know, because his blood was turning yellow. And, yeah, oxygen was not getting to where it needed to. Again, it makes me question, well, what are they going to do? What's the boss and Dopio going to do now? Now that, you know, even though they have, uh, they've beaten Risotto, what are they going to do? And presumably, presumably the gang is going to get up there. Now, they don't know, they don't know that Dopio is the boss, but they're going to be suspicious. And yeah, I don't know if Jorno would just go ahead and heal him, you know? So I don't know. But that was really interesting, so I like that. And then, yeah, using the metallic field, uh, and the boss using that to, uh, using that to his advantage to throw the scalpels, and, you know, basically what Dopio thought was, well, I'll throw them there so that, uh, it'll hit Risotto, but the boss is saying, no, I'll throw those towards, uh, towards Bucciarati and the gang down there. And because of all the problem with the iron and everything, and I'm not breathing, you know, properly, the only thing that's going to show up to Little Bomber is going to be Risotto. And, yeah, Little Bomber was able to take him out, you know? So that was good. So I like that. That was really, really interesting. Um, but, yeah, just a really, really good, interesting fight. And, yeah, I'm kind of... I'm sitting here, honestly, I was rooting for Dopio, uh, just because, I don't know, I like Dopio, he's, he's kind of, he's cool, but he's kind of goofy and stuff, and I love this idea of, you know, him being just in split personalities with the boss, you know, like, that's just a very interesting thing, you know, so I like that, I thought that was really, really interesting, and yeah, the entire fight was good, and I like uh, Metallica, and, and I like also that, I, I will say, I like that it's not a humanoid stand because they i was kind of waiting for that it's like all right where's the humanoid stand but it's not that it's just the little like things you know coming out uh that are a part of him and it's like oh that's it's kind of creepy looking you know like it just sort of fits his whole vibe so so that was really good i enjoyed that and yeah this was a good episode i still don't fully understand the story behind the boss but i assume we're going to get that uh get more uh uh, clarity on that later on so yeah so interesting stuff and i'm excited to see where we are going next time but that is the end of the hitman team an interesting team to say the least i think i've warmed up to them a bit more as the episodes have gone on definitely i like uh Giccio and uh white ice and i do really like risotto and metallica um the others can be kind of hit and miss. Uh, Mirror Man was interesting. Formaggio, I probably would have liked Formaggio a bit more if he just didn't have so many episodes. Like, he took a while to fight. Um, so, then there was those two. Uh, then, uh, Prosciutto and Pesci were okay. They were they were all right but make when they made such a big deal about pesci i'm just sitting here like he's just got a fishing pole just kill him already but overall he's he's not too bad uh who do we have after that malone i didn't really like malone but from the sound of it i don't think anybody else liked malone and uh then i guess after malone was uh Giaccio, and i really liked him and his power and i liked uh risotto uh so yeah so yeah all in all pretty good pretty good overall for the hitman team good episodes i still enjoyed all the episodes you know none of this you know no there was no like i don't even know like how to describe it but there they weren't episodes like you know some of the lesser episodes of part four you know so yeah so honestly they were pretty good and yeah they ended on two strong notes with the hitman team so yeah but that is basically it. Where are we going next time with Dopio and the boss? I have no idea, but we'll find out. So yeah, with all that being said, I'm Alex from Seventh Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around any of those. There's a playlist for all of my JoJo's Bizarre Adventure reactions, as well as another video you can go click on if you want. There's also a subscribe button and a Patreon button on screen, as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.